Youth Foundation Nepal have selected 14 national international social contributors and one best community organization of the year. And today, proudly going to hand over this year's prestigious Social Development Award for them. अब माने क्लोजिंग स्पीच को लगी मौसम तो साहा जिला यहाँ आए रा आपनों के सब तो बोल दिनों ना आर्थिक हार्दिक अनुरोध करते सो। फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल, आई वुड लाइक टू कंग्रेट्यूलेट यूथ फाउंडेशन नेपाल फॉर सक्सेसफुली लॉन्चिंग द सोशल डेवलपमेंट अवार्ड फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम 2012 एंड विथ योर सपोर्ट एं every year and uh, in the very first year the way they have selected winners from all over the country and all over the world this is a very good start actually uh, most of the organizations reach here after working for several years and with a lot of hard work so I would say it's a very good start it's a very encouraging start and uh, listening to most of the winners it is amazing what you're doing with your capacities in whatever size and quantity that is. And as most of you said, it's not how much you give, it's not how much you get. It's this effort that you take at a difficult time. And while I was listening to you, I was taking some of the notes and also trying to relate that to my own life. And the closest I could think of was my childhood. I grew up in early 1980s, and I started watching movies when I was three years old. And in the early 1980s movies, the movies always used to have good guys and bad guys. And there were no experimentation in the movies. So the movie, the movie would start as bad guys having a lot of people behind them, like we used to call them side gundas. And throughout the movie of two hours or two and a half hours, uh, the hero used to suffer a bit, you know, romance a bit, dance a bit. But at the end, uh, throughout the movie, the hero used to be like tortured or be poor and try very hard to so solve issues in the society, help people. And the bad guys used to be rich and smuggle and uh, run after the actress and get away with the police case. And at the end of the movie, in two, uh, two hours or two and a half hours, it always used to be that the good guys would win and the bad guys would lose. And most of the time, the actors used to be cop, or the police. They used to act as police. So as a four-year-old uh, in my village, I used to act among our own children. I used to act as the head of the cop and uh, the other kids whom I thought would probably would be the villains in the village, I used to tell them to act as the thieves. But trust me, nobody wanted to be thieves at that point because everybody watched movies and they all wanted to be the cop. And that was, that was my childhood. Uh, it was uh, good versus bad and truth always prevails and good always wins. And the movies was good because two and a half hours is not a long time uh, for you to feel that good has won and justice has prevailed. In the real life, I chose the field where it was very contradictory to what I saw and hoped as a child. I entered the field of media and I took politics and international affairs as my beat, as my main field. And in my work since last 10 years, I have seen smugglers become politicians, politicians become ministers, ministers getting the salutes of the policemen, uh, getting on the cover pages of the magazines, uh, having no issues with money because even the industries would give them the money. Whereas when some young people going to get some funding for some of their small projects, they would be denied because they are just a bunch of <coughs> young, romantic change makers. And despite even losing several cases, uh, this is what I have seen in, in real life, that bad guys get everything 
that in two and a half hours, I saw them lose. Versus good guys get names, they get threatened, they don't get funded, uh, they go through financial crisis, the hope and dream they sell, or they convince their peer, they don't see it happening, and sometimes they're the only one, if their will lets them move ahead, to carry on with the works that they're doing. So event like Social Development Award, it's very meaningful at this phase of history or this phase of time when in real life I don't see the childhood films coming true. It's very important that an organization and a couple of young people, Sunil himself is a very young person and has motivated a lot of young people who through various ways tries to find out who are doing good works in the country, who are doing good works in the country, the citizens who have come from abroad and who has love and liking for the people of Nepal and for the soil of Nepal and uh, they take the initiative, the effort uh, and also a bit of daringness to invite them and to tell them that what you're doing is a good work. And uh, the villains are still there, the movie is not over. And, but I think this is a good, uh, this is a good gesture uh, to tell you that what is two and a half hours in the movie could be 25 years in reality. But we all are waiting for the day when good wins and bad loses. And uh, in our country where, where there is no rule of law, where people get easily away with uh, corruption, with crimes. And mostly people in power are the one who lead these sectors, lead the negativity. I think some of us should also work in that sector. Like, uh, I'd be happy to see some young organizations come up, even go to the extent of supporting them in whatever ways I can, to form a group of young lawyers with the sole objective just to file cases against some of these so-called powerful people who think it's their liberty to exploit their own country and countrymen. The law, fortunately, in a democratic country is equal and should be equal for every citizen. And every citizen should have the right to bring them to book and order. And no matter how good works we do socially, if we let politics and businesses and bureaucracy run the way it is running, it's like no matter how much medication we do, if the patient is having everything possible that only aggravates the disease, we're not going to solve it. So we should also look into the sectors that will help you know, the country's justice system be more stronger. And my team and I have been raising these issues time and again. Uh, not to mention how many, how much trouble we get into for doing that. Luckily, we're still alive and surviving. And God willing, we'll always, we hope we survive through it. And at some point, we see a larger group of young people uh, take, take it seriously to, to book the bad leaders and give out the message. Uh, that good can prevail ultimately. Because if only we didn't have all these troubles or the troublemakers, it would be so much easier doing the social works. It would be so much easier focusing on the education. So much easier sorting out the environment issues. So lastly, uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, to be here, to see such inspiring people and award winners and also tho those who didn't win the award but were here for three hours to cheer them up, to encourage them. I think today's major credit goes to you who are here to encourage those who won the award. And uh, I would say this is a good start. And in days, please share your success stories with everyone, with each, with each other. 
and please also share how you have achieved success so that somebody else who is struggling, uh, sometimes education or sometimes a bit of strategy is very helpful. Because maybe the success story that Kanchan has, maybe Menukazi could make a good use of that. Maybe what Menukazi has a good as some success story, maybe Indiraji could make a good use of it. Her story can be, her strategy can be used by somebody else. So this knowledge sharing, which is, which doesn't cost much, it gives, it, it helps you become good friends also. Just over a couple of conversation, it's amazing what you can achieve. And we've benefited a lot ourselves in whatever works we do. We have had a lot of conversations with Youth Foundation in Nepal. And uh, it, it, it is very helpful. It's not just um, the monetary support that people get. And I was in Washington, D.C. recently and had lots of meetings. And in most of the meetings that I see in Washington, D.C., they're always worried about raising funds and money. And they, most of them don't know where the money goes. So the, my major point to most of the big organizations over there w was m money is not the main <coughs> requirement especially if it goes to the pockets of 20 people in a, in a country. So some taxpayers should not worry about sending that money to make 20 people in some other country rich, richer, and richest at the cost of, of the poverty of that country. So I told him that getting to know the right way of doing the thing right is the most important thing. And if a grassroots youth has that, we should respect that, we should value that, and we should give that person the credit. It doesn't have to be someone in suit taking all the credit. We should have the courage, it requires a lot of courage for a person to accept somebody's strength and bring, bring them out. And that should be the major requirement, not the millions of dollars that are sent to Nepal and goes into the pockets of 20 people in the country who wants to keep the country like this, so that they can always carry on having that money to their own pockets. And we should stop that. Young people like us should have zero tolerance. We should not tolerate this exploitation of our own future, of the future of our next generation. So what you're doing is very noteworthy. It's amazing. Please keep it like this. Um, most people think achieving money and storing them in some banks abroad which they are never going to use for themselves is the ultimate aim of life. But for some people having respect and adding more dignity and having a life of honor means a lot and for me that means a lot. My grandparents and parents taught me that since I was a kid. And uh, my parents and grandparents, they're farmers, so the food was never a problem. So we never had to work for food. We always had food. So if there was something else that we needed to receive more and more, uh, was the dignity in the family. And what you're doing is, I don't know how much, I'm sure you, most of you deal with the financial issues every now and then. You never probably have enough money to do all the projects that you're doing. Uh, but the honor and then the dignity that you receive for, from what you're doing, I think that's the major achievement and it should always stay like that. And if only we can relate that, we can translate that, we can impart that to the young generation saying that this is the most important thing. We will not have trafficking issues. We will not have the dance bars anymore. We will not have corrupt people anymore. We have 150,000 cops and army in the country. That's a lot of power. If they only stayed honest, they are good enough to take care of the security of the country. If only they were not corrupt, if, they were, if they only they didn't have any political interference. Uh, I have met them personally, I have dealt with them. They all want to be honest and dedicated, but they have families to run. You know, they have issues to deal with. And if young people like us, some of us, could go to the security sectors, to the armed police force, to the pol Nepal police, to the Nepal army, and tell them that we would like to work with you, we would like to uh, make sure that we give you the respect 
so that you can differentiate between being respected and being hated. Probably most of them would choose to be respected than to be hated. If some of you could tell them that we will educate your kids for free. You don't have to corrupt the money to pay their, pay their tuition fees. Probably they would have an option. And these are the new areas we should be looking at. Uh, otherwise, what some of the previous speakers said, you know, we are at a very difficult time. I, I myself see being in the media, what we saw in public is only 5 or 10% of what we know. We see to what level of heinous crime people in power do. The amount of insensitivity they live with every day. And to the level of pain they cause to the people. It's just unimaginable. And what is even worse is they get away with it so easily. There has to be an answer to that. There has to be an end to that. And it has to be young people like us trying to get into it and not run away from it. And you know, to find out the local solution to it. We have had United Nations get involved with the peacekeeping. It, it didn't work. We, we invited experts from all over the world. It didn't work. It has to be a local, local solution. It has to be local calculations. We have to find people in the grassroots and give them the space to come up with their own ideas. And then only we will see the country moving forward. And I personally would like to see that come, day come. And until that, whatever works that I do, my team does, youth organizations does, is basically the stepping steps only. Until and unless we don't see end to this impunity, uh, I would say hope is still at a distance. So with this, I would like to end. And uh, I'd like to congratulate all the winners, congratulate the organizers. And I would like to thank, uh, thank you, who are not the organizers and who are not the winners, to be here to encourage us all. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>